Hello, 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 and welcome to our show. How you doing out there? This is Abel Mabel, your princess of poetry and praise. And I am Brother Paul. And we are here with Conversations with Abel Mabel. Conversations with Abel Mabel, which is on Greensboro Community TV every Saturday at 8 a.m., every Sunday at 1 p.m., and on YouTube anytime you want to watch us. You can also check us out on our website, which is Amen Communications Inc., and that's at www.ablemable1.com. That's ablemable1.com. We're so thankful that you're with us today, and I am just overjoyed that my husband came up with topics for us to discuss today. Tell them, baby, what you came up with. <laughs> I came up with it because you had asked me to. <laughs> I, I was not, well, I didn't volunteer for this, but what I came up with was. Well, I asked you, I said, Paul, what do you think would be good to share with the folks out there? And I just dropped in my mind was, because uh, what I'm seeing now in the world, it's just, people are just going crazy, in my personal opinion. But uh, to deal with things like manners, being polite, and being kind, uh, Right now, we're in a situation where, that I see people are, have just, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. They're, I don't I don't want to say they, they lost their mind, but it looks like they're losing their mind. People are driving erratically. People are being very rude when you, when you go out to the stores or wherever. Uh, salespersons uh, act like they don't care if you come in. If you don't come in, they don't care. Uh, or if they're even around. Well, that's right. Re remember when I went to buy those sheets and yeah. everything? Yeah. And I stayed on the floor about 10 or 15 minutes until I found a chair and I sat down <laughs> and I finally asked somebody, I said, well, do we get all this stuff for free or what? And they said, there's no one here. I said, there's not a salesperson. So what do we do? And you know you can't get it for free, although you would love to. But <laughs> then, but maybe you can get it for free. Is anybody around to stop you? Just go ahead on. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to do anything wrong. But but it's just crazy. Uh, you, you can't find salespeople. And then when you do find them, they don't have answers. And and they're, and they're, and, and they're short with you. Or they don't have the, they don't have the, the stamina. They don't, they don't have what they need to do, what they need to do. And then they got to go find somebody. And so time to get to finding somebody, <laughs> you, you don't waste 30 minutes to try to buy one item. I'll try to get one item that you need. And uh, I just, I didn't, I didn't see this happening more and more. You go to have your car repaired, and uh, you you wait forever before they even call you in, and then they write it up, and then it takes forever to hear anything from them. Then you think they will keep you abreast of what's going on. <laughs> I mean, you know, and then yeah. you, you hear nothing. Then you send me one, am I gonna get a, 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 a astronomical bill, or are they gonna keep the car over? I mean, what's what's, what's happening? They don't keep you. Uh, they don't keep you apprised of what's going on. I mean, it's just being polite, just being kind. It's just when you d go through the drive-throughs. Now oh, that's a hoot. Oh, oh lord! <laughs> you never know. And my husband and I have gotten used to whenever you go through the drive-in, whatever you order before you drive off, you need to open up the bag and check. Did I get those salads and the dressing? and the forks and the knife or the pepper, whatever it is that, that you ordered, because you'll drive off and you'll end up with somebody else's order and you're going, I didn't order these hamburgers, <laughs> I ordered salads, what's going on? And on top of that, no no utensils. What do you think I'm gonna do, eat it with my hands? I mean, they don't, they don't know if I'm going home, if I'm gonna go park in the park and have my salad. I mean, you can't eat a salad with, with and then, oh, dressing, <laughs> oh, I want a dry salad. I, I I I asked for a vinaigrette, and they give you ranch or what? They give you whatever they is in whatever their hands find to do. That's what they give you. <laughs> so maybe we need to have some classes to teach. In fact, I know someone who told me that she had a job once. What do they call the people who go to different stores? 
and oh, the, secret shoppers. Secret shoppers. And you uh, give feedback to the people who are running the stores to let them know how the people in the stores and banks are doing or what kind of customer service did you receive. And you can tell when you go in a place today if people have gone through special training because they go beyond the call, don't they, baby? Right. But those are far and in between. But when you do find those types of places, you want to go back and go back and go back again because it's so unusual and people appreciate you being kind and polite and using some of the manners that you learned as a little kid grow. I mean, when we were little kids, before we went to the sandbox, we learned how to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, please, thank you. Didn't we, baby? Yep, yep. That was part of my my vernacular. I mean, that's what I was taught. And And it was reinforced. It was reinforced by all of the people in your village, by everybody in the family, by everybody who lived next door, down the street, in the next apartment, across the way, everybody's parents and families, when you went to Sunday school, when you went to church, when you went to school, when you went to play, when you went to the YMCA, whatever you did, you heard the same rules over and over again. And as I got older, I mean, I still do it. I always still say, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I mean, that's just a part of, of, my, of my being. I mean, I think you should respect people uh, no matter what age you are. You're right. And even if they're younger than I am, if they're up in, well, if they're up in age, if they've they grown, you should res respect that and, and give them their props. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, they earn those. Yes, and I've even had bosses lately that were younger than me, but I still re referred, yes, sir, no, sir, because that's what you're supposed to do. You give that person respect. And I had one person who told me, I want you to call me by my first name. And I just said, that's not the way I was taught. That's just not the way I was taught. And I guess it gets in your little brain and you just have to keep doing it over and over again because you know this is what mama did. And if you didn't act right back in the day, they what? They slap you to <laughs> kingdom come. They jack you up. They jack you up. They did. They so so what do you think happened? I think a lot of the role models that we look up to, they are not respectful. And when we see people on television or in the news, people are not treating colleagues or superiors or people who they represent in kind ways. I, I mean, there's something that has happened over the course of time that we've lost that genuine care, the care for another human being. It's like people are now almost disposable. And you can see that even in the street life, people will kill you over a dime. And it doesn't, and and they, and I think there's too, there's so much violence on TV, and especially with young folks, they see Gene Autry. Well, no, that's too, that's too that, old. That's, that's too, too old. That's too old. That's they, the westerns, baby. Yeah, they see, You're talking uh, about when we were little. Yeah, you know, they see some star on TV, say Lashawn Lashawn Moore, say he gets shot and dies. and they think, well, you know, but then next week he's back he's on back TV, on. so they think. You know, death is not a real. Death is not real. It's not a reality. And when you look at the soap operas, that's the thing. And I used to try to tell my mom, and my mom would get so upset with me. But you never know what would happen on the soap operas. You know, somebody would be in an accident or something, and they'd kill them off one week, and two or three weeks later, they're back on that soap opera or on another soap opera. And my mama would, oh, she just, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm just glad they're back. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> it was a hoot. It was a hoot. Yep. But uh some reason, things have just changed. And, and, and my personal opinion has gotten totally out of control. It has. It and, has. and that's why we have so much road rage. Because people will cut you off. And, I mean, and, they're, and, they're, and go fast. So... They'll cut in front of you and do some and do some maneuvers <laughs> that you think are just totally. I mean, you know, did I just see it? I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, they did it, and they keep it. You know, 
But you know what I noticed here lately? What'd you notice here lately, baby? There are a lot of cars with the front end knocked off or the bumpers hanging off. <laughs> and I guess they're out here playing bumper cars. Because, <laughs> they call, yeah. because the car's all banged up, beat up, the, the fender's hanging off, and they just are rolling right along. They got mismatched tires, they, the <laughs> hubcaps are missing, uh, and, and they just rolling right along. And, you know, that, they, to me, that I see more and more of that. Just crazy. And and people, you go, you go shopping, and out in the parking lot, there's trash. People in their cars will take stuff they don't want in their car, and what they do with it, they dump it on the ground mm -hmm. as if the ground Mother Earth mm -hmm. wants it mm -hmm. or the bit that you are frequenting, yes. frequenting wants it. Yes. And then they be the very first one to complain when things look nasty and dirty, and they be complaining about, why don't y'all clean this up? Well, why don't you stop throwing the trash on the ground mm -hmm. in front of the business? That's right. I mean, you know... It's crazy. But, but, but Paul, when you were talking about the driving, you know, sometimes we have been together in the car and people will just zoom out, jump in front of me. And I'm thinking, thank God I was driving slow. And then some people in these super duper cars, it's almost like they're, they're ready to race you and you're at a stoplight. And what do you call it when they gun up? Vroom, vroom, vroom. Rev, rev the motor. Rev the motor. Am I supposed to rev my motor? What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to sit there with some common sense because uh, <laughs> what, what they're doing, they're they uh, what, what they're doing is making the, the mechanics rich. Oh, okay. Because all this running and fly, flying fast and stopping on a dime, all you're doing is when your brakes out, when your tires out. So all you're doing is just making the, the mechanic uh, rich. I wonder, I wonder if people who do that know that. No, because they're, they're immature. It's like all these fast and changing, you know, rev the car up and then pop the car and, and drive. That's, 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 a, that's affecting your transmission. And that's a, that's a major rate, uh, a major bill if you got to have your transmission replaced. Yes, your, tra your transmission, your engine, those are things you need to take care of. Right, right. So, I mean, you know, and young people... And old people too. I guess they haven't experienced it. They think it's okay, but uh, that's like when, they, like when they're driving in inclement weather. Some people think snow is, <laughs> I guess, traction giving because they just drive just as fast as they would if the, if it wasn't snowing. Same thing about rain. Evidently, they didn't understand what they learned in school about friction. And the coefficient of friction. I guess they didn't learn that in, in Ooh, class. Listen to my baby. My baby know his stuff. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Coefficient. Did y'all hear that? I told y'all brother Paul was smart. They, they didn't understand that. <laughs> at, least they didn't, at least they didn't absorb that. Because otherwise they'll understand you can't drive 90 miles an hour and expect the car to stop on the dime or expect the car to hold on to the road while you're driving that fast. And eventually... You'll, well, I hate to say you'll look, but your blessing is going to run out. Yes, yes. And um, I remember in working with um, safety people and law enforcement, they would always say whenever there was a big rain, they would say, Mabel, please push and promote and tell people if they see big puddles of water, go around it, stop, don't go through that puddle because no telling what you could end up in. And, and and you put that information out there, you promote it, you push it, and still people just do all kinds of stuff. I know with all the notifications, and everybody should have known should know by now, turn around, don't drown. That's it. And then turn around, don't drown. And on the news, every time you have the major rain, you'll find somebody who tried to go through, they get stuck, the car gets swept away. And sometimes, unfortunately, they, they get swept away. And all because they're trying to say a few minutes. And what they end up doing is making everything longer. Oh, my goodness. So mm. all we're saying today is watch what you do and be careful what you do because what you do has consequences. As I children used to say, consequences. Sequences. <laughs>
that was Joshua who said sequences because in one of my jobs, I, I had to uh, take care of some books that were consequences. <laughs> and uh, one day the kids came by my office and they said, mommy, what are you doing? I said, I'm updating these consequences. And so, and I explained to them consequences explain what happens if you break a rule or if you do something that you're not supposed to do. Here is the punishment. And a few days later, I think our oldest son, Paul Wayne, was doing something and Joshua said, boy, you better stop. You're going to have to suffer the sequences. <laughs> but I was so thankful that they understood what I had said because they knew we're going to suffer the sequences if we do what mommy has told us not to do. So all of us, we will suffer the sequences if we don't drive right, if we don't slow down. And, and no matter where we're going, I know it's important to be on time, but we'd rather be there eventually than to be, you know, in an accident because you hurt yourself, maybe your car and probably some other people too. Well, not only that, but what you do affects not only you, but also affects those around you. Yes. Your family. Because if you get in an accident like that, that you, that you possibly created. Yes. Somebody going to come and get you, you know, <laughs> you know, and then, I know it. And if your car jacked up, now all of a sudden you need a ride. Yes. And even if you won't rent a car, you're going to need a ride to go get the rental car. Yes. So you're imposing on somebody else. Yes, yes. You're so talking every, about money, baby. Right. Everything has a consequence. Yes. And you should, and you should be thinking about that. When you, when you driving erratically and driving crazy. Yes. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> the speed limit evidently must be a uh, suggestion. That the sign should say, we suggest you do 45. Yeah, yeah. Because the people are doing 65 and 70. And I see it every day. And so that's why we have to drive um, offensively. Defensively. Defensively. Mm -hmm. often. Hey, we have to drive and look both <laughs> ways. And even walking, be careful the way you walk. Now, now, when you talk about being kind to people, what are you, what are you saying, Brother Paul? Uh, of course, at home. And saying "May I?" and saying um, "Please" and "Thank you," and being concerned about other people who you are around, and how you try to um, help them first before you help yourself. And that's something we were always taught, especially if older people were around or someone who uh, had a disability, you always made sure all of them were taken care of first. And then you wait until the last minute and you take care of yourself. Yes, something as simple, you know, as, you, as you all know, I, I do, I'm in the grocery store a lot, I guess. But <laughs> anyway, but even in the grocery store, you're going to check out and somebody behind you has one or two items and you got 15 or 20. It doesn't hurt you to say, you want to go ahead of me? Because, you know, it's not going to hurt you to let, let them go ahead. Maybe five, you may lose five minutes at the most, if you if you lose that much. Just being kind, showing the appreciation for other, for other folks. If, you, if you're walking, if you're walking by and, the, and a lady who maybe might be short, and you see her looking up at the top shelf, and you think in your mind, she's trying to, trying, trying to wonder, how am I going to get this off this shelf? Mm -hmm. And you and you tall enough to get by. You just ask them, may I help you? Can I get that for you? And then reach up there. If you're able to reach up there, get it and hand it to her. And 99% and of the time, she's going to tell you, thank you. Thank you. Because you're being kind and considerate yes. of others. And you can be even kinder and even more considerate if you say, I'll take care of that bill if it's just one or two items, Brother Paul. Well, it depends on the one or two items. Yeah, I mean, if it's just some peanut butter and jelly, of course, you can afford to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but if it's a big steak or something. <laughs> that may be a different story. Yeah, yeah. God, God bless you with that. <laughs> <laughs> and keep it moving. And I'll let you get in front of me. Right. I'll, get, I'll, I'll bring that pepper to put on there. Yeah. I can catch it. But just being kind, just being concerned. And and one thing that I really, and I, I guess it didn't happen until we got really stuck on these phones. Okay, you you're having dinner and some people are at your house. And they're on the phone while you're sitting around the table. 
And I just finally said, look, at our house, when we're having dinner, put the phones down to the side just for a few minutes. Let us eat dinner, and then you can call back all of these urgent calls that you have. I think that when you have dinner, you need to be sitting around enjoying each other and conversating and conversing and having dialogue amongst the folks that you're breaking bread with, not between you and the people here and folks on the, yeah, yeah, what's going on? That's just like one of my friends who is in personnel told me she couldn't believe that, okay, she was interviewing someone for a job in the middle of the job interview, the person's phone went off and the guy went, hey, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, I'm, yeah, uh-huh. And she just couldn't believe, here I am doing an interview with somebody who wants me to refer them for a job. And this person is taking a phone, a personal phone call in the midst of this, what I would think would be a very important conversation. That's where I'm saying. People are losing. <laughs> people are losing their minds. I'm serious. They people do all kinds of stuff. I know, you know. know. And they back to the phones. The, the phones are making us isolated <laughs> because yes. people are getting so into their phones, mm -hmm. playing games, conversating. They can't even hear you, and everybody got an earbud stuck in their ear. Oh wow. And I wonder sometimes with those earbuds, can they hear <laughs> that the police, the fire truck? Oh my goodness. Can they hear the sounds around them? Yes. People walking, people in New York with the earbuds will be, will be walking and walking to a manhole because they're so busy. Oh my goodness. You know, look at that phone and you can't hear and then bloop. Yeah. There they go. Yeah. So we have to be careful. We really do. And, and understand that those phones are there to help us, but we have to know when we can use them and when not to use them and not to disturb people. If you're in a class, put that phone up. For real. If you're in church, unless you are taking notes, you know, or your pastor has asked you to do something to Google uh, Genesis 1 and 1 or something, then you take out your phone. But other than that, you know, I, I know one time our pastor, somebody's phone was just ringing, ringing. And he said, don't answer the phone unless it's Jesus. <laughs> but, but because it just gets crazy. Everybody on phone, we're supposed to be in church. We're supposed to be in class. We're supposed to be in a seminar. We're supposed to be at a workshop. Technology has infiltrated our lives and some of it's good and some of it's bad. And unfortunately, we've leaned toward the bad because we like the self gratification. It's just, it's just unfortunate. We need to t t slow down. Yes. Put the phones down. When we drive them, we need to concentrate on driving. On what we're doing. And, 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 and you know something else, Brother Paul, when you said kind, I thought about Barbara Lilly and how she always says, if you see somebody without a smile, Give them one of yours. And that's something you can easily do. Smile. And that's something that we always, in Memphis, people were known for talking and speaking and waving and, you know, and nowadays you pass by folks and they just, <laughs> and I know if we're in New York or New Jersey or Pennsylvania, people don't speak, but down South, we used to speak. We used to speak. Well, you know why that, well. What, you got to be careful now. Yeah, no, I, I was, what I was going to say was probably controversial about the migration of people from North and oh, South. Oh, we, we're not going to get into anything controversial today. But I wanted to mention just a little bit of something from uh, my two books. Uh, the first book, of course, Faith Over Fear, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason and the Church of God in Christ, which talks about Bishop Mason's leadership skills and how he was able to found and to build the church of God in Christ through prayer, fasting, faith, doing what God had told him to do. And by looking at the characters in the Bible and saying, well, if David did that and it worked and if three Hebrew boys did that and it worked and, and you know, if Jonah did this and he ran into that, he learned how to live his life and how to teach 
his parishioners how to live better lives. And that's what that book is about. And then 38126 King's Kids, Nobody Said We Were Poor. This is my memoir of when I was a little girl growing up in segregated housing projects in Memphis, Tennessee. And back then, some of the things that Brother Paul mentioned today, if you did them, what did you say your mama would do? Slap you into next week. Slap you into next week. Is, is, that, is that true? <laughs> and, and, and she was a nice lady. She was a beautiful lady. But she didn't play, did she, Brother Paul? Right. No, I, 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 I'm going to take it off my mother. My, my mother never did slap any of us. But but, but uh, she spanked you. Hey, but she but she was firm. I know, I know, I know. And and these are some things I just want to share with you all from three eight one two six Kings Kids. We sell these books and we do fundraisers in order to give scholarships to students who are matriculating at two year universities and schools and four year universities and to folks who are trying to get CDLs and trying to get their licenses and certifications. But anyway, let me just read this part from my book. Growing up, my folks were always pushing Good Samaritan stories and affirmations that play back in my mind all the time. Let me just read a couple of these to you. You can get more with honey than with vinegar. Never cross a road without speaking. Pretty is as pretty does. Everyone you meet can teach you something. It don't cost you to smile. Treat people the way you want to be treated. God made all of us the same. If a man is good to his mama, he'll be good to you, ladies. Birds of a feather flock together. Don't let your eyes be bigger than your stomach. You reap what you sow. Every chair got to stand on its own legs. Don't count your chickens until they hatch. Do you believe fat meat is greasy? I brought you into the world and I'll take you out of the world. How many of you all remember your parents telling you that? I'm whipping you because I love you. And this is something that really made me understand what thank you is all about. Listen to this. I'll never forget a lesson learned in Handy's Park on Beale Street in Memphis, Tennessee. People would naturally speak, pass by, and if they knew us, give me a nickel, dime, or quarter. I was a little girl then. This stinky drunk dude in the middle of the morning <laughs> passed by us, tipped his hat, and gave me a penny. To my indignation, I threw the penny down on the dry, hot pavement when suddenly I thought my grandmother was trying to body slam me like Sputnik Monroe, Billy Wicks, Jackie Fargo, Jerry Lolo, or one of the Memphis wrestlers. My grandmother spanked my little legs like I had robbed a bank. She told me it didn't matter how someone smelled, looked, dressed, or talked. I must give them R-E-S-P-E-C-T, respect. Then she pushed me down the street, made me apologize to the drunk man, and tell him how much the penny meant to me. Being kind. Being polite. Being mannerable. Showing your manners, even to people who may not look like you, may not smell like you, may not be as fortunate as you. Learn to be kind. This is Abel Mabel, your princess of poetry and praise. And I'm Brother Paul. And thank you, Brother Paul, for this beautiful, beautiful way of expressing to a lot of people out there what we can do to change the world each and every day. See you next time. Until then, be kind, be polite, be respectful. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Thank you.